is uh, super, super, super happy with what I'm doing for my PhD stuff. He's uh, really impressed with what I've done so far. And he thinks everything that I want to do is going to be really useful yeah. and go in a really good direction. Super, super, super happy with Oh, well, that, that's, uh, that, that's cool. So you're, uh, yeah, it seems like you're, you, what you're, what you're doing your PhD on is relatively timely. Mm -hmm. If, uh, if I see what's going on in the world right now. Yeah. And intimately tied into uh, Ukraine as well. In fact, we can take a look at that if you want. <laughs> okay. Let me, uh, let me just get this. Why don't you chat for a second and, uh, I will get the, the, the little analytics thing set up and and we'll do that and uh then we'll then we'll get into this thing yeah sounds good hey everyone i'm stuart hooper uh known hamish now for i don't know probably about seven eight ish years something like that um started off by email then we met up a couple of times in los angeles kept in touch and yeah now got this little series going uh, i teach political science out here in oklahoma um, primarily international politics. That's my thing. Uh, finishing up my PhD right now. Um, also in international politics, looking at NATO and weapons technology and all this sort of stuff. Chemical weapons, biological weapons, nano weapons, all this sort of very interesting cutting edge technologies, which we can take a look at today. And I'm in the process of trying to get my own channel back up and running with regular content. So any of you that want to come over and subscribe, that would be very useful for my channel. Um, putting out quite regular content, about three videos a week, something like that. And really focused on this Ukraine crisis from a critical perspective. Um, much like Hamish, I do not think of myself as a liberal or a conservative and stay far away from these labels and this whole idea of a left right paradigm i think that's part of the problem um so yeah if that sounds interesting to you would definitely appreciate some more subscribers and views over on my channel that would be awesome what what, what is what is your channel give your channel name i'm gonna get a link for it right now it's just Stuart J. Hooper. One Is word. One word. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's where I'm having the trouble. So I'm going to get a link right now and uh, I'm going to put it in the description. There you are, you handsome devil. <laughs> in the suit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think All the right. suit is part of the uh, it's part of the game that you gotta play. If you want to be taken seriously, especially in my world, the academic political analysis well the suit is kind of a must-have i thought yeah, about yeah, wearing well, one for you, this stream but i thought it might have it might have blown your mind a little too much <laughs> well you know the uh that isn't isn't the isn't the whole story with the suit that it's actually like a subservient like sort of slave regale i don't know i've never heard that one <clears throat> yeah you i think if you dig into the tie especially is mm. it has some pretty dark connotations hmm. that's why everybody wears it so um i've put stewart's link to his youtube channel in the description down below and if i was slick like like many i would tag it in the comments let's see do i know how to do that i don't know <laughs> but we'll we'll just spam the feed on that thing and and um, I think we're ready to go. Wait, hold on. I'm blowing it here. I've had it all dialed, but something happened where I can't see it. Just give me one second. And boom, wait, why can't I get this? And Wait, where is it? And yeah, I got lots of videos on Ukraine right now. I've got a new one coming out tomorrow morning, looking at specifically this biological weapon question and thinking back to the Iraq war and everything that happened there. Because uh I definitely remember all of that. And it was uh not fantastic. <clears throat> so you're uh you're starting. I, I that's the interesting thing, I think. Um why can't I get this? It's it's monkey in my scene. Normally this has wait, I default view. There we go. Okay, I gotta be able to see the chat spinning by. 
All right, there, I got the chat up and running. I think I'm doing it properly here. All right, let's go, Tribe. Okay, whoever that is. Let me just welcome some people while we're here. Oh, Gunler's in early, dude. You're Jane, Jane's quick with the salad. John Salvador, dude. Oz, Sega One, Lauren, Rizzo. All right, oh, so. So, um, all right, let me, uh, so I, so it's funny the other, the other day, so we're day 18, right? And, and I think that, you know, I, I almost think we should go back and check, like watch our video from two weeks ago. Cause I think we, we had a lot of, we, we were onto a lot of it and we might've been surprised by a lot that were, uh, that the, that the, the con job is pretty real, man. Like it, real people are paying the price for this one, mm -hmm. but it's not. I, I think I can assert that I, I I wasn't wrong about Vlad. Does not care. He mm -hmm. is going for broke on this deal, and and you were right too about about your angles, man. So so the so on that thing, I did an interesting thing, and it just happens randomly. There was an article about this dude who was calling for this Russian, um health uh a person coming providing relief calling for her execution and it was this dude from odessa and they had him and they were talking about how this dude was instrumental in and he looks like you're a full silver lake hipster this guy right so uh and he's got his AK, his ak and and it said that he was involved with the the might the might all massacre is that what it, the correct name my i'm not sure. in odessa in 2014 right so it led me into the 2014 of the massacre down at the uh at the trade union headquarters where the people got cooked in the building and were jumping off the building and it was in the guardian and again as forget about the slant and the whole thing it was just this interesting lens into 2014 where it was definitely hyping a different narrative Hmm. And it was backing the play that is being it's backing the play that is getting repelled by our good buddy Vlad over there. And, and it, I think it was very and it was talking about a lot of weapons coming in from the West and and what was going on down in the Crimea and how Odessa was the city with these Russian roots. And these guys were, were being armed to take on and the cops were all in on. It was very, a re, very revealing article from 2014. That, again, I don't think that this is uh, I don't think there's any victims here, man. I'm going to go back to my first, the, the, the people that are, have been played and played hard and they're paying dearly for this, man. Mm -hmm. So what, 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 what's, what's on your mind about it? What's your take on us two weeks later on this, this thing? Uh, I think it's still extremely dangerous as a situation. That's still my number one thing. This is still a, uh, our Cuban missile crisis. Um, that's one thing my PhD professor does not agree with, with me on. He doesn't think it's that dangerous because it's not specifically about nuclear weapons like the Cuban missile crisis was. But I think just because it's not entirely focused on that doesn't mean that at the drop of a hat, we might be there. And we've also seen the threats of that, of course, from, uh, from Putin. Um, but yeah, this is still what I think is the most dangerous situation in the world right now, the most dangerous situation in recent history. What about and, uh, the, what about the cruise missiles today in, uh, in Northern Iraq? Oh yeah. We can guess that one in a second. <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> that's a very, know. like, I think, cause so this is like on that thing. My take on it is, as I'm going to say again, there are no nuclear weapons. I, I know it sounds crazy, there aren't any nuclear weapons. And, and I think they're back off on this thing as they, they amped up this, this real hardcore end of the world, World War III, nuclear weapons, nuclear Holocaust thing. And they don't have them. So they got, they have to move. They, they, so you roll in this thing from down in, in Iran and, and where you can get a real global conflict going as, is, is get the Middle East fired up. Cause it, you know, NATO isn't going to join the game. Ukraine has has walked out on the ledge, and I think they're getting the, the they're getting sawed off. And that lunatic Zelensky in there has has given his people a death sentence. Man, it's brutal. 
Yeah, so did you see the drone that crashed? Where did that crash? In a Czechoslovakia or somewhere like that? No, I didn't. What, what was this? So about? there was a Ukrainian drone that apparently went off course and managed to crash land somewhere else in Europe. Mm. So this is the sort of dangerous oops. situation. Yeah, the sort of oops moment that can lead to uh, escalation in these sorts of situations. Um, this is why when you put... Um, nuclear weapons on a hair trigger this is this is just not good um when you put everything into an emergency position oh my god end of the world's about to happen well that puts people on the edge of their seat right quite literally and they will do things and make decisions that they may not have made if it was a time without said emergency so this is the sort of thing imagine if that had crash landed and managed to hit a Russian airbase somewhere just over the border. Um, and we see apparently there was some form of attack into Belarus. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw that, but that was, uh, I think, yesterday or the day before. But there was a claim that there had been a missile attack into Belarus. Again, this is a sort of thing that can lead to, uh, to dangerous degrees of escalation. Um, in terms of uh, nuclear weapons and, and whether or not they exist or not, I think thinking about whether or not they exist is interesting on sort of a, a level that says, would anyone ever actually use these things? Because in a th hypothetical world, what if NATO just woke up tomorrow and said, you know what, we're going to put our full-fledged support behind Ukraine. We're just going to go for it. We're going we're gonna to fly in all of our jets we're going to roll in all of our tanks and we're going to kick Russia out of here. Is Russia actually going to say, well, you know what, we're going to launch a nuke and hit Kiev? I would, I would have, if I, I'll tell you from my perspective and my, like straight up, I already would have nuked you. Mm -hmm. If I had the nukes, if I was Vladimir Putin and I really had thermo, the nukes, I would have already nuked because I know the West isn't going to, isn't going to, isn't going to do anything. The West has shown that they're absolutely what I said the, before is absolutely inept. They are so such cowards. The West is cucked completely on this deal and, and they have no game. If I were Vlad, I would, and I had the nukes, I would, I would nuke right now, just a full, just take one out right in the, not even anywhere real. I would pick the theme. I would send one to, you know, I would, you know what, if I was Vlad, I would send one to my own backyard in northern Siberia. I would launch one from 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 Moscow or wherever backwards into my into Siberia for the whole world to see and go, dude. I got he does. There aren't any nukes, and I know that would actually be uh, an interesting tactic because I don't think anyone's actually uh, tested a nuclear missile, a nuclear explosion above ground. For many, many, many years, uh, thanks to the test ban treaty, I think they're only really tested underground at this point. Even North Korea, they don't even detonate things above ground anymore. So yeah, that would be a very interesting uh, display. I, so, so, but but with that is, I it's, I think that gets that I'm just throwing that out there because I think, but in a weird way, that would diffuse what we really need to talk about. So I think it's just like I kind of come from the like. I think there's something else going on here, camp. And I don't see it as, I don't see it as world war three in the traditional terms. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that, that no one's really paying attention to is, is the rubbleizing of the breadbasket is, is there is no like, and, and Zelensky said it in that goofy, goofy statement he made the other day. God, that guy is out of his mind. Like the goofy statement about we got to plant the seeds, we got to plant seeds and the spring and the whole thing is, is, the, is the Ukrainians know themselves if they don't get if they don't get seeds in the ground, all is lost. Like they if they don't start planting here and, and once once the uh, after the once the spring thaw happens and get the, get the, the seeds in the ground. It's game over for them. And I don't yeah, see I saw that it's uh, North Africa that apparently is very dependent on Ukrainian wheat. And I also just look, looked it up and it was Croatia, 
where that drone landed. Okay. <clears throat> Clarifying. We don't want to be fake news here. <laughs> Definitely not. <clears throat> um, so, but yeah, I only just uh, I only just saw that on Twitter about the missile attack in Iraq. I have not really seen much more on that than just that's the only place headlines. I've seen it. And I and I at this point I I can't even say that it's real. I, I, I think on a certain level, and and I as a and I think we're on the same page as I, I as a as a wonk and 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 I I I dig into it and I look around and I poke and and I do see a certain level of wag the dog going on here. That that I mean you show me. You can show me a refugee crisis in train stations and, and guaranteed there's people on the move. But but the, but as far as I, I've seen, it's just really like one bridge with a, with a plank of wood over it where people are walking across. Like it's the same bridge time and time again. It's the same, you know, the, and I've watched that, like even that footage the other day where they were like, the Ukrainians are making a push on a on an undisclosed village north of U- of Kiev. Like there was nothing going on in that footage. And I've been watching up like and the rubbleizing of the civilian infrastructure is real. Like I, I do believe that. Like, but this there's something not right about what we're seeing, is my take on it. I, I would be a little careful with that line of thought, <laughs> just because even if even if that is true, for example, right, where does that actually get us in terms of trying to make an argument and spread a message to a wider audience? I think we need to do something that brings in more people instead of turning them away and, and well, thinking, I, well, <clears throat> well, I, I think that for me, the where I go is 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 right like they say that you know what they say about the the generals are per, are preparing for the the next war with last war's strategy right mm-hmm. so i i see this level of certain ground war tank it looks very very reminiscent of this thing and 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 from from what i see is is it's 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 almost fake because that's not what real war is about anymore right and and where i see the real war going on is is this thing with the food and this thing with the uh i i think it's all a big i think it's a different kind of war i think it's the war the war really is going on for us back home and we don't even know it I think it's like a dust up, like, oh, it's going on over there. And it's this thing, but but the what they're doing on the background is this devastating realignment of of infrastructure with money moving around and food moving around and 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 we have yet to see the the true ripple of it, you know, because we're only 18 days into this, you know. Yeah, I heard uh, something earlier that apparently two of the top FSB, the former KGB um, intelligence officials in Russia, have apparently been uh, scooped up or placed under house arrest, something like this. So the idea now is that our initial kind of analysis also seemingly was correct in that there were claims being made to Putin that, yeah, we can go in and we can get this and they've got nothing. There'll be no resistance. We'll just go straight into Kiev and we'll be there in 24 hours. Well, I think there was a degree of hubris in that um, sure. that has had very real consequences. And I think the the Russian army is facing this and a lot of them conscripts 18, 19 year old kids, right? Imagine being sent, oh, you, you've got to join the Russian army. Well, okay, they might have been all for that. They might have thought it was maybe fun and games on their drills and exercises. But then all of a sudden, they're being marched into Ukraine head first into what Putin has been told this is going to be a walk in the park. And it is anything but because this is not Syria. 
like I think we did also mention two weeks ago. Sure. Um, this is uh, not bombing people in caves. This is not bombing people that are just trying to shoot at you with AK-47s. This is trying to attack a modern, somewhat modern military that has had a lot of NATO support for at least the last eight years, um, according to the analysis that I've been able to do and look over on NATO's website. And the country has been flooded with anti-aircraft and anti-tank missiles. Um, and you can see the devastation. Um, so much so that tanks are just being upright abandoned. Russian military personnel are just leaving them behind and running as far back as they can possibly get. Um, when you're conducting an invasion, you do not want to be leaving tanks behind for the defenders to pick up and fortify their positions. So I think a lot has gone terribly wrong, logistically speaking. And I think there's been a lot of um, misunderstandings and misinterpretations of the resistance that Ukraine was going to offer. Uh, Putin was probably expecting them to be welcomed with open arms. Um, kind of like those old classic photos of, um, you know, when Hitler goes into Czechoslovakia and all the people lining the streets with the little flags. I think Putin was maybe expecting something like that and instead got uh, an anti-tank missile, a javelin and a stinger coming in his direction, shooting these tanks and hitting these helicopters. Um, and yeah, again, no, no amount of uh, training can really prepare you for that, I don't think. Um, no amount of deployment to a place like Syria can prepare you for that. Um, again, all fun and games, shooting people in the desert who have no means of shooting back at you. But as soon as there's a missile coming straight towards you, things change dramatically. <clears throat> well, I, 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 on that one, I, I think that I think you're not, I think that's, that's accurate. But I think if I go on the thing, I don't, I don't really think they figured that, that it was going to be a suicide cult they were up against. Cause mm -hmm. at this point, like I, mm -hmm. that's what, victory, what victory looks like, I don't see it's gone. Like, so you, you've really like somehow they, they drank the Kool-Aid and were like, went on a suicide cult. I mean, mm -hmm. the country's, destroyed at least the eastern half of it and it and it and it looks like okay so what are what what are you defending now like it's and it's a rebelizing campaign which i which seems to me very the western world's that's what i mean is like i think you have like like one component that is this sort of that and then I, I think realistically, the West has been trying to get this going for a very different reason for a very long time, which seems to be this changing the energy structure, changing the food structure, this agenda 2030. And, and where, where would you do this? You would do this in, in, you know, arguably one of the largest grain producing, food producing regions of the world, which will ripple out which is, which gets, and their whole thing is this weird deal with the energy. So you've, you've now, you're now, regardless is it's, it's going to shift societal, like it just hasn't rippled through people's reality yet, but the, the societal shift is going to occur here mm -hmm. into closer to their objective than anybody cares to it, admit, like, yeah, for me, uh, and this is, again really is the focus of my PhD, um, I would argue that what they were trying to do is bring Ukraine into a transnational techno military empire, um, which is NATO. Um, they want as many countries as possible under this umbrella. Because what NATO does is more than just say, hey, if you get attacked, we're going to come and save you. Um, they transform the entire military of a country that they enter. Um, what they essentially do is convert everything over to systems that will be interoperable with all of the other military systems that are part of NATO. Um, so it creates essentially a transnational military force, um, which can 
operate anywhere on the globe and any of these countries can essentially flick a switch and they will be joined into it as a result of these interoperable technologies um so yeah i think that was the the goal here in ukraine and uh they have been in ukraine like i said for many years probably at least eight years um we're looking at um and we can look at this one thing if you want i can share this <clears throat> So this was a uh, this was um, something that I've been looking at for my PhD. Um, this sure. is something that nobody else in the the world has really studied on any significant degree. Um, in fact, we can probably just jump back a page here. Um, the Science for Peace and Security program promotes dialogue and practical cooperation between NATO member states and partner countries based on scientific research, technological innovation, and knowledge exchange. The SPS program offers funding, expert advice, and supports tailor-made civil security relevant activities that respond to NATO's strategic objectives. So again, this is important. Everything that the countries do here um, is tied into this, the strategic objectives of NATO, which of course are creating this transnational techno-military empire, which supports and defends globalization. That is really the goal of NATO. Sure, sure, and sure. Keep globalization alive, keep globalism alive. That is really what it's uh, shifted into. Um, so this will be probably one of the focuses of my uh well no i like i i like i see that that <laughs> i guess that's what i'm kind of getting at is is the 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 one the people that the ukrainians got duped mm -hmm. into this they're the sacrificial lamb for this like yeah so you, they, you can see here what ukraine has been doing so this is really interesting right so remember before we get to this what has mainstream media been telling us for the past uh two three days now Absolutely no biological weapons, nothing like that sure, going sure. on in Ukraine, right? Well, what does this say? Ukraine has been actively engaged in the science for peace and security program since 1994. Sure, sure. In 2019, Ukraine was the largest beneficiary of the SPS program, with a total of 28 ongoing SPS activities led by Ukrainian scientists and experts. In recent activities involving Ukraine, leading areas of cooperation included security-related advanced technology, defense against chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear agents, Interesting. and counterterrorism. That's what CBRN stands for. So what does that then mean? That means that something was being done within Ukraine sponsored by nato involving chemical biological radiological and nuclear agents question becomes what is it what is it that they were doing if it was purely theoretical research which it may have been there's nothing to worry about if it was applied research well what would they have need to, needed in those labs to do that research actual pathogens actual chemicals so something was going on here, and I think some digging needs to be done to figure out precisely what that was. Well, you, you can, I mean, just you can see I, all these countries here in terms of who's involved with these programs, and a lot of them are not even official NATO members, but you can see sure. where NATO has its fingers in all these different pies around the world. And again, in my thesis, is trying to create a transnational techno-military empire that is 100% trying to support globalism. That is its goal. Well, no, that I think that's what I mean is I think that that one, I, I, what I see going on is, is, is that, and, and, and everybody's focused on this, this victim story. When, when I go, I go, it was a setup. Mm -hmm. It was a 100% setup. And I think, I think that they thought they could bluff their way through it. I think, I think Vlad was like, it's now or never. I'm going to make a move because I'm on the chopping block because we're, we're, we have too much control over here. 
It's all about these pipelines. Syria was about pipelines. Ukraine's got all the pipelines going through it. It's all about energy. This global thing is, is about, you know, again, it gets into this globalism and it's curtailing our free use of energy and, and movement and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I see it. It's like I saw a comment that said, I, I know there's a war, but the war isn't isn't a bunch of people shooting bullets at each other. That's that's the uh, that's the lower dimensional level of what's going on here. That mm -hmm. the, the people that thought they that again is, is my, my baseline. And just if you stay in Ukraine, it's it's just a suicide call called defending your country, whatever that means. It doesn't, there's nothing left to defend anymore. It's been destroyed. It's off the map for, for a generation, bare minimum. Yeah, they can get in there and, and get, get the, uh, the bulldozers working and the whole thing, but those people are never going to stop doing that. They're, they're pissed. And, and okay. So the, it's, it's, it, I mean, we were talking about this six weeks ago about the history of the, of that area and, and the, the, the animosity towards, towards this chew toy that it's always been there right the crossroads of asia and europe and so no i i i think if you i think if you're sitting in your in your in your basement there's really a war going on and you got played and you got tricked and you sat back and while the nato was doing its little dance and that's what i meant would like if you look at what was going on in 2014 the level of violence in ukraine was huge like when you read about the, the what is it the Maidan Mardon Maidan the, mm -hmm. the Maidan is it Maidan yeah when you read about all that that's that's basically civil war was was they were shooting at each other killing each other in the streets of of Odessa and eastern Ukraine and the Crimea and the whole thing Obama was talking about it Obama didn't want Obama knew what what, what was at stake and I think. You know, they they pulled they waited and now they need this right on the back of of COVID because you have us you have a compliant society right now that wants nothing more than to get back to normal, man. And and what a better way to get everybody to comply this. Mm -hmm. And, and and ultimately to get what they want, they want to take your calories. Oh, they, they've said it as much. They want to take everybody's calories away, and and they want you to stop using their what they think are their resources. And the, what a perfect way to do this and get everybody to support it. Like they're fighting for their country. Yeah, great. They they lost. It doesn't matter if they repel the Russians or not. They lost. It, they they lost it's rebelized mm -hmm. and so yeah when i see this and what you're you're moving through yeah i don't think that people understand there's way bigger wheels at play than ukraine it's just the proxy for all of it yeah and you can see that they they come and promise funding right We're, we will uh, write you a massive check um, but what do you have to do? Well, you have to contribute towards NATO strategic objectives, have a clear link to security. Um, so, yeah, like you said, in terms of uh, reeling Ukraine in and then using and abusing it. Um, yeah, that's absolutely what has gone on here. And it's probably going on in a lot of these other places in this list as well. These partner countries, some interesting ones in here as well. Uh, Switzerland. So much for uh, neutrality, <laughs> right? Working intimately uh, with NATO in the security, uh, the science for peace and security program. And this is also important, just how this stuff is uh, portrayed for peace and security, right? Everything that NATO does, purely defensive, purely in favor of peace, purely trying to just ensure we live in a peaceful, democratic, free, liberal world, when in fact, um, this is anything but. Even if you just look at some of these uh, 
some of these countries that are members of NATO. Um, some of these countries, right, they're not exactly what we would call uh, havens of democracy, <laughs> so to speak, and liberal values, and especially not uh, a lot of these partner countries. In fact, most of those partner countries would definitely not fall under uh, a banner of uh, democracy and liberalism. <clears throat> you definitely wouldn't find a Thomas Jefferson uh, in Bahrain, for example, or Qatar, or Serbia, or the United Arab Emirates, <laughs> these sorts of places. So you really have to look at this stuff uh, with a really critical eye and say, what are they really doing here? Well, they're not doing anything really for peace and democracy and classical liberal values. Um, they're trying to support a transnational militaristic empire that's number one goal is to defend and support globalization <clears throat> yeah i mean yeah it's it's it, it seems uh, obvious like on a level but that but that's what i mean is is when you pull the it's the perfect it's the perfect bait and switch it's like i ran into someone yesterday right like i thought was pretty aware of the hustle and he went right into the the I hate Russia thing. And I'm like, dude, like you've bought into it. You've bought into the polarizing concept and 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 gone in, in on the thing instead of pulling back the lens and seeing that that's the whole objective is to get is to get you to look there while this is all being built around around us right now. You know, I, I don't, I, it just seems like such a. It well, that, really... uh, that certainly helps out this aspect of the, uh, the con job, which we could definitely say is Biden's Ukraine aid package is getting supersized by Congress. Sure. So there is one clear winner in this, and that is called the military industrial complex. Well, they uh, they have their... just gotten the, the shot in the arm <laughs> that they need for at least the next decade. <clears throat> well, I mean, I mean, that's the thing. It's 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 again is I it's it's the same trick that I saw we saw for two years. It was getting people to somehow buy into upholding and supporting big pharma that's the same trick they've mm -hmm. convinced people to support the 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 if big pharma was the evil entity this is the evil entity mm -hmm. on the planet it's the military industrial complex so going and they're fighting for their country no they're not they're they're pumping for, they're they're dying for the for the for the war makers man these dudes what they love sending over their things poland with like i look at poland like oh we'll give them the jets give us some freshies mm -hmm. like it's all a it's all a hustle man i don't i don't see how anybody thinks that this is anything but what it is and yeah i got it but i got no sympathy for for for, for the people that have chosen to rebelize their own reality by fighting for the globalists, man, to, for what? I like literally like the maneuver would have been to have just stared at them and let them run out of gas and go home. That would, they would have won. They would have taken by 18 days. If they had literally let those idiots roll in with their 140,000 people and their tanks and their nonsense and park all over the country and get very dispersed and just stared at them. They literally would have been home by now. Like, all right, well, what are we doing now? We're good. We got to go home. We're running out of gas and our rations are running out. And like, I'm driving my tank back to, to Moscow because like, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. Like, they 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 blew it, man. I, I, I don't know any other way to say except the Ukrainian people got played, played. And, and also, and you got to remember, also, most people, most people have no interest in foreign policy at all. Um, that's very true in the United States. I would bet it is also true elsewhere around the world. Sure. We looked at some numbers. Um, you know, people pay more attention to domestic policy than foreign policy. So all that stuff we just looked at with NATO's involvement in Ukraine, um, I bet you'd be hard pressed to find one more, person, 
that would actually know that that was going on. But yeah, this is just insanity, all this. Uh, you can see here the initial, uh, where'd that go? Uh, Chuck they... Schumer, yep, there they are, dude. The same old, same old people, man. Yeah, I think it was... Yeah, it was originally 10 billion and then it got up to 13.6 billion. And then, yeah, now uh, more broadly, defense related spending in the omnibus bill would rise by 42 billion over last year's level of 782 billion. That's so this is, just a, this is just a joke. Uh, anyone that says that the United States cannot have uh, a government funded healthcare system, uh, well, here is uh, your government-funded healthcare system. You want free healthcare in the United States? Boom. Uh, you could pay for that immediately um, with this, and you could pay for a lot more with it as well. Um, also, any any other kind of social problem in the United States, right? Why is the, the US um, not number one in the world for education? Why is it not number one in the world for having zero homeless people on its streets? Why is it not number one in the world for having zero drug addicts or zero uh, problems in terms of uh, social issues like that, right? Um, there is more than enough money to solve all of those problems, probably in multiple countries simultaneously. That money is funneled instead into this. Uh, and people just sit by, cheer the military on in the United States, uh, clap, salute the flag, thank you for your service, uh, how, how can I assist you? Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a joke, and people are being played. Uh, this is your money, which I think is the important thing to remember, right? Uh, and my money too, now that I live and work in the United States, this is my tax money as well. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, as long as we allow this military industrial complex to continue to exist, uh, the country is not going to go in a positive direction. Well, I, I think that it, you know, it, it comes back to the thing I've, you know, I've been talking about for years. I mean, we got no business like this and nobody in the United States of America has any business saying anything about anything going on over there. Cause we sat back, we're, we've mm. sat back right now, Yemen, Palestine, the list goes on, Libya, mm. every, like almost every country in Central America, South America, our, mm. our invasion, like that's what I don't appreciate. It would be one thing to go, this doesn't, like if, if people were like, this doesn't serve my interests, I can ultimately see Go, okay, like, yeah, that's at least an honest under, understanding of what's going on here. This doesn't serve my interests. Okay, fair enough. But this, oh, we're these Putin's wrong stuff is like the utter level of hypocrisy that 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 people who have not looked in the mirror and been like, dude, you sat back while our country in your name rubbleized country after country, like. Like for my, for my entire lifetime, this has been going on. Mm -hmm. We have been going over to foreign lands and doing exactly what, what Putin is doing to the Ukraine. And, and we've been totally cool with it, dude. And to, so, some, so, and to some extent, worse. worse. Uh, even, if, even if you look at World War II, firebombing of civilian cities by the US and UK. Oh yeah, the Dresden um, stuff just Yeah, cool. throughout uh, Europe and throughout Japan. Oh yeah, the, the for the firebombing was insane. I mean it makes those uh makes the mythical the mythical nukes look look mellow. Mm -hmm. I mean that's again is is uh, that's where I bump into the thing and you're not going to get me to side with anyone on this thing. I'm mm -hmm. a I'm a staunch anti-war person. I don't mm -hmm. see and, and here it is, and people are being tricked into getting behind the suicide squad. And, and, and again, is the half the reason that those people got played was thinking that the West was going to be honest with them. Because they, they looked at the West and they go, the West is a bunch of serial killers. 
Mm-hmm. He'll back our play. We're, we're strategic. Just you, like you said, with the NATO and the thing is they're investing in us. They're giving us weapons. They, they've done the, the, the regime change. They're going to back us. They're a bunch of serial killers over there. And then when it went, they went, they went, okay, all we got to do is, is hold the line for a minute. And they're going to just flood us with, with the stuff because, you know, Putin's bad. And yeah, and in, the, interestingly, the the definition that we ever get of weapons of mass destruction never includes anything that the Western world uses that might be deemed a weapon of mass destruction, such as depleted uranium. For we example. came, we saw, we killed, man. Uh, yeah, ex- exactly. Um, doesn't include napalm. Doesn't even include stuff like a uh, Roundup. The uh, pesticide, say, yeah, yeah, which definitely you could say is a weapon of mass destruction in terms of what it does. Monsanto, um, weapon of mass destruction. I mean, that, that's that's where I don't. That's my thing. Is like, it is is yeah, yeah. Pearl Harbor, another con job. Yeah, it, it's it's this. The look, I I'll say this again and again and again is your average human being wants nothing to do with this. Mm-hmm. No one, no one's, it's in no one's interest, right? Which is why I think this has to be the ultimate teaching moment. Uh, we have to bring as many people as possible into the anti-militarism camp as possible. <laughs> we need to remove militarism as a political option from humanity's list of uh, political options. No more use of war to achieve objectives, period. Can you just imagine what our planet might look like right now if instead for the last 20 years we'd been uh, fighting this war on terror and all this bull crap? Imagine if we'd been putting all that effort, attention, and money into doing something positive and building something. But I, but I guess that's what I'm... But that, I guess that's what I'm sort of getting at, like in a weird way is. Is there's is until we face these nuts and bolts issues like with ourselves. Yeah, that's where it's mm-hmm. got the thing is if you can be easily duped and, and not bother to do any like cursory looking into what's going on over there and just start hoisting blue and yellow flags in front of your house and justify justify it's 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 again is it's it, i'm not saying it's right wrong like it's all wrong mm-hmm. there's nobody who's right and, and, exactly. and again, this is I'm, wrong iraq was wrong libya was wrong. wrong syria was wrong all of it is wrong this is just not what we need to be doing and if we want to move forward as a species um yeah this this needs to be well that, that's what like i went when i went down to chile right i went down there and you know that was the the first generation of of kind of people that were this this younger generation that i was down there surfing with were all sort of the 20 something chileans who had moved out of the city to go you know build their pizza stands and surf camps and move away from the thing because, you know, their parents had been embroiled with Pinochet and, and Alande and all of that stuff, you know, and I was down surfing in, in, in Pichilimu and they like, they straight up were like, that's where they, that's where they, they would torture people. That was like the, the, you know, the black ops building there mm-hmm. on the point there, which was now a surf camp. Like they was, there was a level of understanding of, of what it was because it happened in their own backyard, right? It happened neighbor amongst neighbor and it still wasn't resolved. People were still very, except this generation had moved, was trying to move out of that mindset by, you know, getting away from the, the thing. And, and I think that's the hubris of the, the, like, the western culture is to go oh they're just do this and that i go no dude this is coming from on high that lunatic 
uh, they're, they're that little lunatic short guy, the actor running, running around with this little speech with the wink. How about the creepy wink when he did the little spring about it's spring and it's thaw and it's gnarly and he gives that little creepy. I wink think I like, actually saw it. Oh, dude, watch the very end of it. He winks like like he's hitting on you. It's like a it's like a hitting on you wink. It's not like a, it's cre- I used to know a dude. An older dude who used to like that was like he that had that thing, thing and, I, and it was a total, total misogynistic, sexist thing that he was doing. And I saw I'm like, dude, what is this? Why? What would you why would you wink about this? There's nothing winky going on here. Mm-hmm. And every and I listen to this guy, man. And I, again, I'm getting the English translation of of his Ukrainian. So lost in translation to it but i again i don't i watch the the person and i go dude that guy is such a used car salesman man a political mm. used car salesman who is conned this before these, we go back to uh ukraine um i you mentioned uh chile um, I knew I had a quote in my notes about this, which is a really good one, which I just managed to find. Um, and yeah, this is on the idea of uh, transnational corporations and their involvement with militarism. Um, this is from a book called The Sociology of the Global System by Leslie Sclear. He says, where serious challenges do emerge to the globalized system, for example, in the election of the socialist Salvador Allende as president of Chile in 1970, the threat is removed by the violent overthrow of the constitutional power by the capitalist class through the army and the police with key support of actors within the establishment. In the Chilean case, as is well known, this was done with active collaboration of the US government and transnational corporations. So yeah, just the the fact that this has gone on for years, like you said, it's throughout the entire world. Um, It's, uh, I think it's time for people to get interested in foreign policy and international affairs and international politics. I've always been innately interested in this stuff and i think it was the fact that i grew up when i was 10 years old 9 11 happened then just grew up in this whole social environment of war on terror and conflict and war and peace and this sort of stuff so i've always been interested in it but i think we need a global movement that pushes people down the road of hey you need to pay attention to international politics because uh, this stuff matters <clears throat> well I, it, I, it's that thing it's it's you know you get back to that you know, when they, you know, when they bombed Le Mans, Le Mans right, the, the Chilean White House, it was hmm. on September 11th. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. know that. No. So, so again, is, is, I'm almost positive. It's, I had to wait, fact check that, dude. <laughs> Kill, killing date, Alande killed. I'm almost positive it's September 11th. There was another guy that was uh, assassinated, I think, in Washington, D.C. I think he was a Chilean official. Yeah, dude. That, so on September 11th, 1973, Salvador Allende, president of Chile, died from a gunshot wounds during the coup d'etat. So mm. and so but they like, like I don't think people understand the savagery. And again, is you can look at you can look at and, and I think. I have a fascination with 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 Chile, and I don't know why I do, because you could argue that Alande was a legitimate positive socialist influence for the Chilean people. I mean, if any if anywhere it might have worked, it might have been Chile and 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 because it's such a unique geographic country the way the way it is and it's got plenty of resources and plenty of different clients and biome regions and the whole thing and you look at the interventionalism of chile and and what what and really just the fu nature about what it was about it wasn't really for anything else except fu you're not doing that and and so i i don't think that like when like it's the irony in these states. These people don't know that the woke culture that that the power brokers will never let them have socialism. 
ever, dude. If, if they, they will never let him have socialized medicine, socialized anything, because anyone who's ever stood up who had a possibly a good looking model of it with the people's support, with with a democratically approved majority in a country taking back the means of production, they went and killed them, guy. Right, Mohammed Mosaddegh in Iran would be another exception. Another one, example. exactly. Yeah, moved to nationalize the Iranian oil. In other words, ejecting the specifically the Western oil companies from Iran, or saying, "Hey, you can stay here, but you've got to pay a massive increase in fees to the Iranian government, and we're going to use that money to provide benefits to the people of Iran." Well, the CIA and MI6. Um, ousted him, um, staged a coup, got rid of him, and brought in the Shah, um, who instituted what can only be really be called a reign of terror, created the Savak, a secret police force, and yeah, another historical nightmare brought to you by uh, the techno military intelligence covert forces that work for globalization. Well, I, and and I I think I'm I'm with you. What you're what you're trying to do here is 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 the tricky thing is expose this as an invalid procedure in the human condition. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. Wars never worked. It only works for the rebelizers, dude. Because because again, is is is. And I will suggest that the, go look into your heroes and see what they're invested in right now. Go look at them, the Americans, because they're all on in on it, dude. They're all in on it, dude. They're all making money on this deal. Republicans, Democrats, you're big, you're big. You're big, uh, you're big. You think these, these are, uh, what do they call it? You're, you're, what are, what are the Trump people called? Nationalists? What are they calling themselves? Patriots? They're not patriots, but they're whatever they are. They're all making dough on this deal. They're all making dough on it. They've all invested in, in the military industrial complex because that's where the money's at. And, and it's all has something to do with this, this, the currency needs to move out. Look, the system's bankrupt. I mean, and you, Trump brought uh, a lot of those people into positions of civilian power as well. So he brought a lot of generals into those civilian leadership posts, which is generally seen as a conflict of interest and dangerous, usually. And we like to keep the military on a short, tight leash. Um, and yeah, inserting them into civilian positions, not necessarily a good idea. Yeah, I, I, it, it's 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 a bizarre. It's it's that's what I mean. Is this is such a bizarre? I mean, it's I don't want. I guess it's bizarre is the right. It's a tip. Another typical thing. That's why I don't have any. Yes, C. Wright Mills has this term. I may have mentioned it before. You love, C, you know, you love your C, you love me some C. Wright Mills. Yeah, I want I want to kind of be known as an expert on C. Wright Mills power elite within then within the next few years. He has this term, and he says that the American people are psychically raped into supporting the military, um, which yeah. he only mentions it once. But I plan on doing a whole research program on that very term because living here for six years now that is absolutely true it is crazy it's over insane here. It's, it's absolutely so insane so weird uh, it's not like this anywhere else in western europe but the weirdest um, thing is they they, they absolutely what, what what was the c right mills quote that the american people are psychically raped into supporting the military but it's so weird because like like yes and then there's this pathetic and i've talked about it this fence sitter thing about it like as as a as a as a person who does not believe in war right absolutely does not believe in war i i do run on the gambit is if you're going to live in america and and live in the abundance that is the American way, you're by default so pro-war, so bloodthirsty 
that you don't even know it and you have the balls to say that you're supporting people's right to defend their country. Mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about a country that went and wiped Libya off the map. And that was a country where like the, the amount of, of the, there you go, there's a country that a, a leader who, well, arguably not the best guy, actually was doing some pretty good stuff for his people was getting people into homes, was getting people educated, was supporting marriage. Was yeah, they had some uh, really crazy policies. Like, um, I think they gave newly married couples, they may have given them a house. Yeah. I think they at least gave them a car or something and a subsidized no, house. No, no, the there was something family crazy thing like that. was so... No, the, the, then going to college, it was, it was again, mm -hmm. it was what it what is it is 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 it, you had a country that was stable where people were given the benefits of clean water clean infrastructure education promoting family promoting here's a home live in a home yeah and he then, built something he also built something i forget what it was called it's like the i don't know if it's the second nile or the, the great African aqueduct or no, something be, like no, that. No, but because, it was like the biggest engineering project in human history or something. Libya, there's a giant uh, aquifer. It's all about the underneath Libya, there's like a giant aquifer of water. No, no. But he it, did it, something with it, which was the biggest engineering project in human history, apparently. <clears throat> yeah, so it's, it's, it's again, is, is we as the United States of America don't want to look in the mirror. And, and that's my thing about it is don't look at the bad man on the other side and be, oh, that guy's so bad. That guy's so bad for what he's doing. Yeah, it's evil. It is evil what is going on over there. But we over here do it too, even brutaler. We don't mm -hmm. even do it to our neighbors. We literally move ships around the planet and 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 launch these crazy airstrikes and rubbleize we rubbleized a second world nation for what because and they just look at uh look at iraq as an example the ah. shock and awe campaign um Shameful. so if if you want to try to start comparing these things well russia initially did only try to hit military targets um, of course, it's expanded since then, and we're not justifying this on any means. But what did the U.S. do on day one? Uh, military targets, infrastructural targets, bridges, water treatment plants, power stations, anything sent the entire civilization back to the Stone Age uh, within a matter of hours. So, um, yeah. And that was another look. You can say what you want about our puppet, which was uh, Saddam Hussein, by the way, which was our guy. Most people just mm -hmm. don't want to look at that either, that he was one of our our assets because we had him fighting the Iranians and he was our hero. Till and he decided uh, Reagan also sending stuff to the Iranians as well, <laughs> playing yeah. both sides of that thing. Of course, dude, because that 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 nailed it all down. But again, what were both of these dudes doing? They were moving away from the petrol dollar. They were instituting a gold backed currency. And and here you are again is is. You know, one thing I haven't heard mentioned in a long time in alternative media uh, and also mainstream media, which I think this situation may bring about world government we have not heard that term in a very long time right um i don't remember the last time i heard even anyone in the alternative media talking about this as a problem but what did world war one try to achieve a degree of world government it failed that's called the league of nations world war ii get the united nations uh, it's got a few more teeth than the league of nations but not really a whole lot more uh, it's bas basically a paper tiger um, perhaps this is the event that would be used to push towards this system of world government and create the world army, uh, which NATO very well poised to become. Well, I, I, th I think it's already, I, from my, my pers 
perspective is 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 where I've been, you know, looking at it a lot is is the is the real trick here is the 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 world is when you get down to the fact that there's there's only what nine cargo container companies on the planet, right? Of shipping containers. And they break down into three like conglomerates below that. That the fact that every port in the world operates with these same standardized cargo containers all over the planet. Mm-hmm. I've I've been saying for a long time that it's already completely organized, that it's just it. And again, it's, you know, a lot of people talk about this is it's it's Michael Tessarian gets pretty into it, but it's it's these are just feudal farms called countries and and Mm -hmm. they've all they've have them all linked up already in in globalism and on time. Was it on time manufacturing or what what are they just in time just in time manufacturing and so we we've we've become dependent upon this as a world society right Mm -hmm. and and you looked at like where people didn't see the real harm when they shut down the world two years ago who took a beating the third world man that's the real people all of us we just sat home and and well hemmed and hawed and this and that the people who went hungry we're the people in, in these impoverished nations that need the cargo containers to come pick up the supplies so that they can make their things and keep the, the things going, right? So you get them off the map. You don't need to give them the shots. You don't need to give them the, the sauce. You don't need to do any of that because they're already, they're already begging for any, whatever they can get, right? You take the West, you dr- grill, drill them down a little bit more. You get them begging for all this, like, get, get back to the, the good old days. And then right, right when it, like, what? The, the transition period's like a week here of overlap. And they go right into this nonsense and knock a third of the world's food off the table. Most of the energy off the table. And, and, and everybody's like, oh, dude. You're so uh, if we if we do survive this and we don't enter nuclear apocalypse, immediately afterwards, put your bets on economic collapse. <laughs> um, that's where we are headed. If we look at all current available metrics in terms of inflation and energy prices, uh, yeah. Um, the well, next I, 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 again, is, is, that. Well, I, I, this is it where I, I go is is the the. The, the the nuclear holocaust thing or the whatever it is why i'm very about breaking the spell on that is because that gets you off to the gets you away from the real thing that's going on they're not going they're not going to do that cuz they can't do it and it doesn't serve them and they're not they're, they don't it's just not there what they need you to do Again, because we, uh, from what I understand, the the whole thing's based upon consent. The Ukrainian people consented to what they did the minute they threw a rock. The minute they went, oh, okay, I'm going to get into violence, they greenlit the thing. Because that's what it's about, right? And so we're all sitting here going, ah, it's about that. And that that's the end of the world and this and that. And I go, well, we're actually consenting to what you're talking about, the collapse of the thing, because we're not safeguarding ourselves against it. Like the whole world runs off of petroleum products. And I don't think people truly understand that is, is I don't care if you're a vegan who wears grass slippers, doesn't drive a car, and walks everywhere, you're still living off of petroleum products on a certain level. It, it's, it's, it's getting in there. Unless you're like some true, true freak. Who Unless is, you're, um, I think I have the book. The John, food for us John guy, Kaczynski, you know? the Unabomber, in, in his little shack out there in wherever he was. <laughs> yeah, like, like people don't understand like, like, yeah, okay, great. So they turn off the cars. 
the cars are not the where the where you're going to get slammed with this oil thing. That's not the problem. Mm -hmm. That's it's everything else. Do we import a billion dollars of fertilizer from Russia a year? A billion dollars worth of fertilizer. Where's that? Where's that fertilizer coming down? Because most people aren't paying attention to any of this stuff. A lot of that fertilizer stuff got shut down recently. China's holding all their stuff back for over a year now. They they shut all that. They're not they're not quickly selling it either. India's got the same thing going on. So most of our fertilizer comes from Russia. We buy a billion. Just everyone wrap their heads around what a billion dollars of fertilizer must be about in in your uh, agricultural regions. That's all. Where's that coming from now? Where are we getting a billion dollars worth of fertilizer for your, you know, your, your burgers? And it ain't your tortilla chips, baby. It's, <laughs> it's your other stuff, man. That I don't think people understand that, that every box of cereal requires petroleum products to get that stuff in there. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's organic. Yeah, just to get it to where it needs to go. So, so when we see what's going on, that's what I go. I pull the lens back away from the humanitarian crisis and get to the real crisis that's going on because it's going to be exponential if people don't stop this insanity. So you get the consent thing, right? You move this, this mentality of somebody's right, somebody's wrong. We fight it out. It's justified. It's justified food shortages, supply chain breakdowns, economic collapse, move out of the thing. And that's not a very far leap to being like, hey, F you, dude. Because the society's already pumped for it. We just did it for two years. You're not wearing the thing. You're, you're not taking the sauce. You are wearing the thing. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Trump, orange man, blue man. Ah! And, and I go, dude, we haven't seen anything yet if we don't stop the mentality of going we're going to justify one team over there. They're all wrong. They're fucking crazy people. It's in their culture though, man. That's the, I don't think people get either. These aren't a bunch of Canadians over there. Like that, like the Ukrainians are not a bunch of Nepalese monks mm -hmm. hanging out, meditating on weekends. These are crazy people. That have that are, is historically been cuckoo for cocoa puffs. That that eight years ago we're in a civil war about what I don't know, dude. You know, so I don't know, man. I I, I see this as we're we're way off the target as a as a culture. <laughs> I you know I think that's why we're discussing it is because like it ain't gonna stop that. What it was I, I just what I mean? What do you think? I don't think this ends over there for i mean shortage of, if let's say we live in a perfect petri dish and the world keeps moving along and no economic collapse and just that scene over there what decade decade of 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 fighting back and forth now in the rubble yeah i'm not sure in terms of prediction uh, i wouldn't even want to make one to be honest i think it's been so unpredictable you could even wake up on Monday morning and see that Putin's just said we're immediately withdrawing. He might not even say anything. He might just say, hey, we're, we're gone. We're leaving. Um, but then, yeah, that leaves uh, Ukraine. Like you said, it's still going to be a massive process in terms of rebuilding. Yeah, no, but I mean, back. you think those lunatics over there now who are all like rah, rah mm -hmm. with their with their javelins and their AKs and their Molotovs and their, their fancy fatigues and their their armbands and stuff. You oh, you think that the Russians just leave? Well, we're out. You well, think yeah. They let's say there? they did. Let's say they did that. Well, what are those people going to do? No, the Ukrainians are going to roll right into Russia now. Like, uh, well, even if know, they don't do that, maybe it's terrorism in Russia. I'm surprised it has. That, that's what I mean. Is there's a level of so maybe a, a subway in Moscow goes boom, something like that. I mean, that's all this stuff now. The enters remember the Chechens and the, and, the, and the opera house and the schools? Mm -hmm. The Chechens all, weren't playing. All this stuff now enters the realm of possibility, which is not fun to think about on many levels. No, I, I, from what I, I don't think, I don't think Putin lets off the gas. I don't think he, I don't think he's, I don't, I, it goes back to what I was saying six or eight weeks ago. 
I think I think you got a couple rich TikTokers and and oligarchs that are like, yeah, dude, this sucks. And they took my yacht. But I think the average deep down Russians are like, dude, the Swift thing got shut off. I hadn't seen any of that anyhow. What do you mean you took the McDonald's out of Moscow? I don't care. What like what? There's no more support. When you look at that on uh, one level, that is kind of a sad state of affairs. What is the West removing from Russia? McDonald's, Dude, the- Burger King, KFC, Coke, and Pepsi. <laughs> well, the the hottest is some of the memes out there are like. And I come at this as a fast food fan, by the way. I will fully admit I'm a fan of fast food. But uh, but yeah, it's kind of a sad state of affairs that that is the uh, no the primary export of the Western but, world on a cultural level. No is Netflix, fast no Netflix, no. And I think so. I think that that's where like I think people have misunderstood a culture that that has been that. I mean, come on, it's 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 when you get down to it is is it's not that big of an economy. It's not some super powerhouse. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's been made up to be a boogeyman. It's not all they have is is their toys. And I think I think I think the leaders over there are like, you know what? Whatever you do to us, it doesn't matter. We're good. We got what we need and you ain't coming over here. Because we were willing to throw 27 million people at the Nazis, dude. So suck it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think you, we know what, what, what I, again, is it's the Western mentality versus a different mentality. And I'm not going to say it's Eastern. I think it's a, I think it's a totally. I would put it as uh, nationalism versus globalism. I think is the key defining distinction of our time. No, um, I mean more on, I mean more on like a, like a, like a personal level, hmm. like, like the West is completely enamored. Look, I went over to the, our, my local Chinese military base to buy some stuff today. Right. And I was walking around and I was just looking at people like shopping, just And I was like, dude, just storage shelves filled. And I'm looking at it with this lens. I go right now on the planet, there's just rubbleizing going on. And this chick's here debating whether she's going to get this Tupperware or that (laughs) Tupperware. And she doesn't, she doesn't care two bits. She might say, "Ah, I don't like Russia, man. Like ah, that. Yeah. Whatever. Who's the leader. I don't care. It's bad. It's bad. Everyone says it's a bad vibe over there, man. America's and the West is so enamored with the tr- the trinkets and the trappings that we think that everybody on the planet, it's the same reason we got smoked in Vietnam. We thought that they cared about what we cared about. And they were mm-hmm. like, we don't care about what you care about we're not we get out of here we don't we don't want the mcdonald's <laughs> we're gonna get it anyhow so suck it man i mean look at them it's it's that thing so i think we've i think the west and especially the populations of the west has misread the russians and the russian political class and the and the russian gatekeepers and they're like dude we don't There's like also it. something that you said about the. I love how you call the the WalMarts and Targets the Chinese military bases. By the way, yeah. Um, but yeah, we were in one uh, last week. I was just looking at this giant freezer. It must be about twenty feet long, and the whole thing was just filled with hot dogs. And you just look at it and you just think, "What is happening here? <laughs> this is a one store in a small city in Oklahoma." And it's filled with probably thousands of hot dogs. And then you just look at the rest of the world and just think, what has happened? How, how is one place in this situation and the rest of the world is in a completely opposite situation? And all of the people walking around here just couldn't care less. As long as the hot dogs keep coming, that's what they will care about. Well, th- uh, so this goes to my thing. And, and, and so every time I, 
and I haven't had it in a while because I've so overridden the fear. So I, you know, the last, let's say that the, the, the eight years or so before uh, the coup began, right? Let's say pre 2020, I would, you know, I would get all caught up in like, you know, Alex Jones or conspiracy guy that, or like what's going on this. And I would, I would get the fear, right? Like, Oh dude, like it's all, it's madness is coming. Right. And then I would, I would all of a sudden be like, have to go drive far to do something. And I would drive and I would be like, I would see like giant interstate infrastructure projects or local highway projects going on. And I would be like, and it would, you know, I, the whole thing's the globalists are coming to kill us all and the whole thing and this and that. And I go, and then I would be driving and I'd be like, dude, this, this overpass here in Bakersfield, like in freaking Bakersfield, the useless eater city, if there's ever been one, get this <laughs> giant billions of dollars to make these interchanges for people living in trailer parks, right? Like, so I go, I go, wait a minute. I drive through these things and I go, this, this dispels the globalism thing. They know they're, they're not building interchanges on this massive level just to keep, just to keep the trailer park people happy, dude, with the job, dude. They're like, they're not planning on shutting down America anytime soon. And that's where people need to wake up and be like, we, we have the ability to call the tune because they ain't going to stop that. They're shutting us down. They need us. No, America's the, uh, the American people are the bankroll of the America of the military industrial complex. Exactly. So keep eating those hot dogs. <laughs> eat, eat the hot dogs, drink your Mountain Dew, eat your ho-hos and ding-dongs and STFU, dude. And root, root for those dudes. Putin bad. But so when I get into or that better thing, still, don't even say Putin bad. Go and shout about a sports team being bad. Yeah. <laughs> really remove yourself and just think. Well, I think else. that I think they blew it because because the NBA not blew it with this Kyrie Irving thing. The they, everyone saw through the sports through the coup. Like, ah, eh, you guys are on a hustle, right? So they need the big sports game, right? Like if you see it, they're kind of killing sports like deliberately. I mean, look at the uh, Chelsea, right? Mm. You know I mean, they're, they shut down Chelsea. I mean, look at, they, they got to shut down soccer. All those dudes are dropping dead, man. So, so I think that, that the big game now is this, this like, no, dude, you guys are just going to run out of gas, they're running out of gas, dude. We're not, they're not going to shut anything down. We're going to be fine. And I think that I think that the, the con job is to get you to root for war mm -hmm. and, and be like, and I go, OK, well, you want to root for war. That's great. Like, OK, I, as as a as a tr America, tr American truther, if you will. It's it's our culture. It's in our nature. We've been doing it from Jump Street here. Mm -hmm. Manifest destiny, the Monroe Doctrine. The, the, the legislation in Congress to el eliminate the Plains Indians, the, the whole kit and caboodle, dude. Our narrative as a people is kill and conquer, baby. Take what, take what we want. And, and I don't know if that's even bad. Like on, on, a, on a certain level, I think what's bad is we've decided to not commit one way or the other. Like I'm all for, I want to commit to the organic, peaceful reality, right? Like I want that. I'm a hippie. Gun toting, homeschooling, organic farming hippie, man. And, and the people that I see that have lost their minds are the, the liberals. I, I mean, the, the amount of liberals that are pro-war all of a sudden blow my mind. Like, mm -hmm what because russia huh well that's really easy to achieve after four years of uh brainwashing the entire country into thinking that russia was the enemy and russia is the reason why trump was elected 
if you think Russia is the reason Trump got elected, uh, you're clearly on a the wrong track. <clears throat> yeah, and and that's and 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 here come here come the here comes the rebelizers. It, it's a tragedy, dude. It, like, mm-hmm. like it's funny. Like I I did a thing where I I was like looking at the uh, the footage, like the first three days, you know that the the like you know that. That before it was being rebelized, like it was just the first salvos of, of chaos. And now you look at it now and it's just like, wow, like mm-hmm. it didn't take long, man. Nope. And, and, and again, as I, where I see people not truly paying attention to this thing is, is all those women and children that are now refugees that don't have anything that left stable homes, stable communities are now in the wind. Is anyone keeping track of those women and children? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, there, there will be horror stories that come out of this for sure. No, it's it this is diabolical. And, and mm-hmm. you should not be rooting for this on any level. Like you, like you need to con- you, like again, the damage is there's no unringing the bell. But to think that 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 those dudes doing that, and and this is and not calculating that into the thing, it's one thing. It would be one thing if they had like, you know what, honey, we're dying here in our home. We're fighting to the end. Kick rocks. But these dudes actually got conned into sending their women and children into the wind. Like blows my mind. I would never do that to my, like, I, I would never leave. Yeah. That's crazy. And so with that, that everyone's like, oh my God, like I saw that thing with like 30,000 people in Germany open their homes to the, these poor Ukrainian people. I go, all right, let's say 1% is, is weird. Mm-hmm. Or a tenth of a percent, man. Yeah, there will definitely be some horror stories that come out of this. Oh, that we don't dude, want to hear about. that is just predator trafficking. Dude, the, the mm-hmm. traffickers are sitting there with vans and buses and like boxes of donuts, just like, hey, come with us, dude. We got to. Mm-hmm. It's like some bad saw movie dude i i just i just don't yeah looking at like you said looking at the pictures now is it is incredible how the country is just it is now crumbling literally crumbling um and you see that maternity hospital um probably not a direct target uh, but that is called war that's what happens in war accidents happen um and Those yeah aren't you can, accidents you, you can call war. it out yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, miss, misfires happen. Rockets go where they're not supposed to go uh, because they're rockets. Um, this happens and they will hit things. That well, they, no, but the hit. trick that I, I would say this is the trick that they got tricked in to do. The minute, the minute you went and dumped out crates of weaponry in the street and you said you are now, what do they call themselves? The home defense force or whatever. The minute they armed the civilian population, they lost their standing as civilians. Mm-hmm. They're now yeah, armed combatants, man. Mm-hmm. And they're fair game on a certain thing, dude. Like, I get it. Like, I yeah, get it. Yeah, that's exactly the, uh, the case that will be made when it's uh, when the images are broadcast. <clears throat> yeah, there was. Yeah, that dude. Yeah, mister. I, I was uh, I was a. Uh, I was a, a, a concert pianist with the family in my apartment in this town. But, but yeah, but you were shooting an AK-47 out your window at a tank. You're no, you, the minute you're doing that, you're no longer a concert pianist. You're an mm-hmm. armed combatant because we're at war, right? <laughs> like, the people don't get that they've been tricked. Those people got tricked into losing their status as civilians and and joining it's it's a one thing to be like hey i'm in my house like did you see the footage of the old people kicking the soldiers out of their house and they're shooting the ground and the old lady doesn't flinch 
<laughs> no, I've seen a few videos like that. Not that specific one, but I've seen some like it. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. And the people were uh, standing in front of the tanks and the people protesting outside. If they had the, done uh, that as a nation, if mm -hmm. they had done that as a nation, had just sat down. Imagine did, if did, they all uh, parked their cars on that highway that uh, the tanks are trying to use to get into Kiev. Exactly. <laughs> No, if, if, but they got conned. They got con You saw it unfolding when it began with them dumping out the weapons and being like, here, here's your Anderson Cooper going here, build a Molotov cocktail, the faxing of the Molotov cocktail. Dude, don't also, you get that's uh, I wouldn't advise my if I, I would not advise my citizens of a country to be building Molotov cocktails just on a practical level. That is extremely dangerous extremely dangerous to be messing with gasoline like that um, well, the, the, it's not just gasoline it's gasoline with styrofoam in it so it sticks it's napalm essentially mm -hmm. yeah that's it's just ex that's extremely dangerous i mean i mean one spark and it's over for you well the, again is they've uh, it's it's interesting because i heard one of the uh a strategist talking about that what with kiev like Kiev, or they changed the name to Kiev, but I, I it's like Kiev, right? Is yeah, I heard they did that because that's closer to how Ukrainians pronounce it. But then, are we going to start saying Paris instead of Paris? I mean, I on, on some of this stuff is just ridiculous. I've been saying Kiev. <clears throat> so, so th there's a there's an interesting one of these analysts or generals or whatever was like, look, man, the Russians, why? And they were like, why aren't they like blowing up? Kiev, right? And they're like, well, because a rubbleized city makes is 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 makes all sorts of defensible space. Like an intact city that you you work with attrition actually like is is easier to invade than than a rubbleized area because there's just nooks and crannies to to hide in and and fight with and you like everything's blocked, the streets are blocked and you can't move around in it. I go, they're, they're trying to encircle them to sweat them out and go, look, dude, you guys are, you're done. And those guys are like, we're, we're going to get the, you know, the 17,000 stingers or whatever from the West. And, and, you know. Something and that was a uh, research and I think developed in the fifties or the sixties was the neutron bomb, sure. um, which is essentially just uh, a mass of radiation, which is used against a city does not uh, destroy any buildings. This destroys anything that is alive. Um, so yeah, these sorts of things exist. Uh, hopefully we don't see anything like that deployed but yeah um, all this sort of really terrible stuff is what we as a species have dedicated our time effort and money towards developing instead of things like i don't know eliminating poverty um, ensuring everyone on the planet has access to clean drinking water this sort of stuff um, eliminating diseases that could be cured for pennies a day diarrhea for example um, in sub-Saharan Africa, kills God knows how many people on a, a yearly basis, I, but could be cured for pennies um, simply by providing clean water and uh, the electrolyte solutions. Um, but no, we don't do that. Uh, we develop neutron bombs. <laughs> we think of more ways to kill no, each mad. other instead of build each other up. <clears throat> no, and, and that's, I think that at the end, like the, the thing that I think that's, that's where like, I, you know, we're, we're, we, I mean, you know it, I know it. This is, this is madness. Like you can't get into this mindset at all and be like, it's you, that's the hustle. That's the con is to get you to destroy yourself. Like th they've won. They needed, they, obviously it's like, again, it's like they win. It, it It's, it blows my mind that that they they've achieved they have achieved willingly by the population of the west what they've been working on for a long time they have shut down food and energy distribution to the modern world and we're and, go gonna see and it. uh thank you facebook for now allowing the military industrial complex to succeed even further by now allowing people to call for violence. How is, what Russians. is this? 
that's, that's exactly insane. what we should expect from the military industrial complex which facebook is apparently now intimately a part of well that, i mean again is is like yeah it's it's okay to hate and and people don't see like that's what i mean i talked to this person i knew i thought was pretty hip and they're like i i hate russians and this and i go dude that that trick that you do is going to be turned inward you wait and see man if you can do that that what that's how it happens man these people don't get that they've been they've been geared up for two years to justify someone's got to pay the price man someone's taking a fall those guys those guys ah uh, i can't get behind that man i i can't get behind it i think it's it's and where do you think we could be now as a species if we left, if we did actually leave war behind after World War II? 75 years later, what do you think we could be doing? It's instead? on the deck of the Enterprise, man, floating mm -hmm. through outer space, exactly. searching for galaxies far, far away, dude, eating squares of jello, dude. Yeah. Hanging Mars out. Mars could probably be terraformed. Maybe we'd have people living on Mars right now. No, the second, this is third a generation of people. But instead, what have we done? Look, I'll tell I'll tell you what is as a as a as a you know as a guy who went and battled against the the the, the destruction of the old growth forest in the nineties and really dug into the scam that was going on there with all that too and you know but I spent a better part of being an alcoholic for that very reason being like what why would we be doing this. What, this is futile. This is stupid. Like I, as a skating, surfing, stoned, drunk dude, knows how to fix this. Mm -hmm. But you guys don't. Why don't you want? What? Why? Are, again, is it's this weird thing of like the the like people just don't. I I be. It's beyond me. I brother. It is beyond me how nobody can see through this this hustle and be like like this what enough. are we doing <laughs> enough is enough <clears throat> yeah it's like like and it, but i'll go back to say is i think that that why they they dropped the hammer was maybe that's exactly what was going on in canada and, and new zealand and and all these trucker convoys around the world back then was people were like enough enough we've had enough and now it's 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 we're rooting for teams again like like it's it's disgusting i i don't mm -hmm. i can't like look like if you really care i, I say this to the people that are oh my god did the, the pray for the the ukrainians and this if you really care you better get ready to adopt some children man you better put your life where where it is because because that's what it comes down to. If you truly care about all these people, you better get ready to start adopting some children, man. Because we're all going to have little Ukrainians running around in our households if we truly understand what we're up to. But we don't. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna we're just gonna sell them out too. I mean, look. I mean, I, I the one thing I think that that if you wanted to. People get like to give the orange man a lot of credit for like he exposed the media for what they were, right? Arguably he did. Arguably that's the, the best thing that dude did in four years was just to expose. Yeah, I'd say that too. I would say that definitely. <laughs> we exposed the media for the scumbags they were. At the end of the day, I'll give I'll give Vlad the exposure of the indifference and the inhumanity of the West and, and what they've done. That, that, that's why everybody's like, rah, rah, we did this because this was a powder keg waiting to happen. And, and our scummy leaders with their tight pants and their messy hair and their old drooling faces went and told these dudes to go do this. And then they just turned their backs and were like, eh, you're on your own. <laughs> like, like, 
and and told us you guys are on your own too we got this all going here we're not going to help them and you guys are going to pay the price on this too mm -hmm. and the more i was thinking about it, it's also this isn't a new thing either this is basically the whole of the cold war <laughs> everything that happened from 45 to 91 um, no, this these, is a tragedy. The two People... superpowers going around the world promising countries different things and then just blowing them up and taking what they wanted and leaving. <laughs> well, I, I think I think we're about to see again is is we're pretty early in the game, but I, I think we're about to see some other other people make some other 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 feudal farm lords make some moves. Hmm. You know. I, I, and I think it's going to be some side angles that we didn't like really like see like, like some just random, like, like all of a sudden the Afrikaners make a big move again, just take mm. back Africa, Southern Africa or something ridiculous. Like we were like, Whoa, well, maybe it's uh maybe it's Iran. Maybe that's what we just saw this evening. <laughs> well, the, uh, the Iranians got to be crazy to sit, sit and wait for it. Well, here's the thing though. If the U S tries to go into Iran, that's going to look exactly like the Russians going into Ukraine. You're looking at thousands of dead soldiers, lots of shot down helicopters, lots of blown up tanks. That is not going to be a walk in the park. Iran is a very modern military force. Uh, yeah, bad idea again across the board. <clears throat> Maybe we should return to what George Washington said in his farewell address, mm -hmm. which was, let's not have anyone as a permanent friend or a permanent enemy. <laughs> Let's just work with people as we can, do business with them. And then sometimes they'll be good to us. Sometimes they'll be bad to us. But let's maybe not just set anything in stone. Uh, let's be willing to change our minds on certain things and move in a better direction if possible. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a weird, it's just such a, a weird thing because I don't, I can't believe we're here. Mm -hmm. Like if you had asked me, like again, as I, I, I can get all, I can see it on the big chessboard of exactly what it is, but then on a more personal level, right? I look at it and I'm just like, are we really? Is this really going on on the surface of this planet in 2022? Because that was my exact whole, reaction when I heard about Libya first off <clears throat> yeah that libya thing bummed me out to like no end I and mean, then was, now this one especially yeah i was bummed too. about syria man like mm -hmm. i was like dude because i'd always wanted to go to damascus i always wanted to go to moscow i will now never be able to go to moscow for probably about the next 20 years at least <clears throat> yeah no, I, I, I think that that's... I may not... very well be arrested when I get off the plane just for my uh, political credentials at this point. <laughs> they might think I'm a spy. Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> I, 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 again, as, as I can't put my finger on it, but there's something else going on over there, man. And, 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 I, and I think that it's, it's they need... From my, from my just gut, I, it seems to me they need to have it devolve into you know a, an orwellian thing that's just always going on over there a, a constant thing going on i don't i don't think that I, I, like it's funny because i think that i think ukraine fatigue is already set in I don't think people, uh, you care. know, I noticed that on, I think Monday or Tuesday of this week, because I've been watching mm -hmm. these uh, live news reports on yeah. YouTube. You can actually find quite a few of them. Sky news in England is one I've been watching um, this week. They started at the end of every half hour news segment, returning to the sport news. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's already starting to slide. And uh, I'm sure the, blue and yellow flags will slowly be dropping off of profile pictures and well they never really got stuff. that much they never really got that much steam dude i again as i think it's i think the big hype on it is is more is more orange man it's orange man bad versus blue man good 
You know what I mean? I think that the general, like, even if I like, even that this person I ran into the other day, who like, it wasn't like these poor Ukrainians. It was like, Russia sucks. I hate them. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like about this other, because if it was about this other thing, there's something else that there's a component that's not happening. And, and, and it's, it seems to be very, very coordinated to the human trafficking agenda. And that seems to be what it is. It's like, and, and again, these organizations, these big organizations, that's what they do at the underneath of the whole thing. I mean, you might as well have under the, the sub headline of NATO is, you know, you know, abducting people with our around the world since you know whenever whenever and and same with the un do they love that that's their whole weird dance is they're scumbags Mm -hmm. so you know uh, that might be a good uh point to end on (laughs) it's it is i don't even know it's funny because it it's um it's almost like you want to dig into it and like, but there's nothing to dig into. It's just another lame war, dude. People dying. Mm -hmm. Like there's no resolution to it. It's there's no, there's no resolution to this. It's the same one. It's the same one that's been going on my entire life. It just moved. Mm -hmm. So what's the resolution? Cause the whole, cause again, the, the big, the big resolution. And again, this goes back to where we were talking in the beginning. The big resolution was the nukes. No one seems to care about that. So no, I, the uh, the universities have done a fantastic job of sending a potential generation of anti-war activists down. Let's just say some very useless ends, <laughs> some very useless roads instead of being against militarism and war and nuclear weapons. Instead, we have a, a whole generation of people that are concerned with non-issues, to say the least. But I uh, borrowed, uh, have been borrowing a phrase from Webster Tarpley, who you may have heard of back in the day, uh, who he, I believe he borrowed it from someone else, and it is get active or get radioactive. So if you want this to end, do something and move um whether that be run for office yourself call your congressman um email your congressman just do something go out join a protest um, and say that you want a peaceful solution to this no more escalation we want an immediate ceasefire that has to be the goal immediate ceasefire on both sides but that's what's funny is 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 that's not that isn't what these people that the are saying like mm-hmm. that's what I mean. I don't hear that isn't the rhetoric. It's it's Russia bad. It's mm-hmm. good. This is good. Like and people, Lindsey Graham, how do we get some more weapons? Dude, to kill how us in crazy is that? That 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 that's that these people and you can look into the with Graham and these scumbags over there rolling with the these people back in the day. I mean, that's the thing is is the photos don't lie. Like these people were all there. Mm-hmm. supporting them and and they have the balls to call for the assassination of a world leader mm-hmm. that's psychotic mm-hmm. it's extremely like, dangerous I, I i i see that's where i think it's all gone off i do believe that that if we were truly about what we were about he would have been arrested immediately and put on for for inciting violence this is the this is the point that i make in the video that's coming out tomorrow morning if we wanted to move forward as a western world why are the people that got us into iraq not in prison right now yeah i'm i'm with you why are the why is hillary clinton walking around Mm -hmm. with her she i mean she got up and and had the balls to basically admit it we came we saw he died Mm -hmm. like the, the the fact that we talk and then laughed after saying that as well. Don't yeah, and laugh. Bad. The fact that we tolerate our leaders mm-hmm. openly discussing and inciting murder and violence, and we don't 
stop. Like, that's what I mean is they, like, I don't know how we get out of this because most people don't want to take a deep dive on themselves. Go, how would you tolerate? That is intolerable to me. Mm -hmm. Like any of it. <sighs> I, geez. I, I, I feel, I, I don't know, brother. I do know that I ain't worried about it. On well, a I'm still, uh, I no. still get in on off swings of feeling physically sick <laughs> about this situation. Oh no, um, it's bummer. It's a bummer, dude. Like, mm -hmm. like I, I was made a video the other day. It's the uh, cauldron of bad vibes. Hmm. It's just a cauldron of bad vibes. But I think on, on, in that thing is, is, is once we know what that colder that that cauldron of bad vibes comes from within us, it's time for us to go the other direction. Like we can't hang out in the cauldron of bad vibes. We are, mm. we have it inside of us. That's what I mean is these people are showing their hands once again is, is a guy just goes back to my friend the other day that, that was like, I hate the Russians. And I go, dude, if you have hate in your heart, you'll fall prey to the trick. And he's like, I don't have hate in my heart. I go, you just said you hate, you just said you hated him. But in his own weird mental gymnastics, that's not hate. And I go, that's the trick, right? Mm -hmm. That's the trick is, is to convince yourself that you hate a group of people. You think that your average person over there is like, oh yeah, this is rad, dude. Like, great. They're, they're, they're as clueless as, as the, the lady looking for Tupperware at the Chinese military base, man. Mm -hmm. They're just like, what? You think you think you're out, you're rushing out there in their, their village with sketchy technology and working on their turnip farm and trying to, you know, getting pickled and hoping for the spring thaws like, Huh? Like, uh, yeah, I don't know, dude. I got, I got a cow that's, that's, that's got its head stuck in the, the side of the wall. <laughs> dude. I can't let it die, dude. Like, you know, like there's some sort of infestation of there's, you know, there's some sort of mold on my new seedlings, dude. I got real problems <laughs> with it. Like, so I, I don't know, man, this hating on people thing. Cause they, they, their leaders are scumbags to me is just the definition of insanity. Mm -hmm. Cause if that's the game, cause if that's the game, then, then where I have, well, I'll finish We'll finish up here is, is if that's the game, we hate Russians because of their scumbag leaders then we don't get to get a free pass as individuals over here for our scumbag leaders. Like, I don't think people mm -hmm. understand that, that that works both ways. If the people of Russia get to hold the bag for their scumbag leaders, don't we get to hold the bag for our scumbag leaders too? Or no, we're, we're special boys. We're mm -hmm. special boys and girls, dude. No, because because we're righteous. We're the least righteous nation on the planet, man. Oh, but we go, we do the melting pot. Everybody wants to come here and we have all the opportunity. Yeah, we do. But the, but the, but the inability to look introspectively at ourselves and our history and that's our Achilles heel from my, my take on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a tragedy. Yeah. Uh, couldn't agree more. <laughs> maybe we'll, maybe we'll get through this. We just got to keep speaking out. Right. Yeah. So do you think in two weeks we're going to be talking about this or something else? Um, I know. I, I keep seeing economic headlines that seem to be suggesting the, uh, the stock market may be wavering do you, significantly. Do you check out the Ice Age Farmer? Mm -mm. He's pretty good. I also like this, uh, the Uneducated Economist. Oh, okay. Two YouTube channels? Yeah, the Ice Age Farmer and the Uneducated Economist. The Ice Age Farmer, he's really good. He does all the shipping stuff. He's, oh, that's that guy. Yeah, he's a different. He's not the one I sent you, though, not with the boats. He kind of keeps an eye on all the guys. He's more into what's um, the Ice Age Farmer, what's going on with the, with the food and economies and oh, okay. the whole thing. And then the... Uh, the uneducated economist, he's like a dude who works at a lumber mill or something who makes videos from his car at like lunch or something. And he and he and he's pretty he's pretty good because he's got a handle on on it. And then you know, I'm I like peak prosperity a lot too. Hmm. Check out peak prosperity. Mm -mm. Uh he's on he's on it, dude. He's been nailing the whole thing with the coof. 
the whole time. Peace, peak prosperity is like legit, like actual, like legit guy. Like, like a real, a real dude. And then, you know, th- and I want to thank you for uh, the band dot video, dude. <laughs> so I, I've gone two years, Alex Jones free, dude. And, I, and he sucked. And I was like, ah, oh, there he is, dude. I check in on Alex Jones about once a month and just see what's going on over there. Well, you got you got to see what the what the, what the gay frog's all about, dude. Because <laughs> because because if you don't because the gay frogs usually like disseminating it like like on a certain level. Like you had some pretty good stuff there for a minute. I was like, okay, all right, and then I was like, dude, I can't too much gay frog. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart, I love you, brother. I'm stoked we do this every two weeks. It's good to uh, it's good to talk and think about this stuff, man. Definitely, it's, yeah. It's, it's real, and and we both, you and I, are on the same page about the solution and and mm-hmm. get involved. Everybody out there, get involved, man. Take a bite, dude. Take a bite. Get active or get radioactive. It's yeah. kind of that's that simple at this point. <laughs> pretty much bro so anyway <laughs> keep us it keep when when you release your uh your phd thesis when you uh, get to buy probably, a copy. This, probably this time next year ah we gotta wait this long dude that yeah. thing's gonna that thing's gonna be radioactive by then uh, yeah <laughs> i'll be writing it out by hand we're gonna yeah <laughs> i'll be inscribing it into rocks <laughs> smoke signals man yeah <laughs> all right sir good night my brother yeah good to see you and, hey, oh wait hey everybody here's Stuart's channel it's on the in the description but um what what are you uploading what's what are we looking for uploading tomorrow uh video on ukraine it's gonna be lots of stuff on ukraine and this one is looking specifically at this biological weapon question and thinking back to the iraq war era and the build-up to that and all the lies that were created and even the offices in the American government that were created to create lies. <clears throat> dude, that yellow cake uranium's real, dude. The steel tubes? <laughs> Let's go in, man. Colin Powell was shaking it. Mm-hmm. A little vial of it, dude. It, it's that. You know, one thing I mentioned, I don't know if do you, do you remember this, but um, you remember the anthrax scare? Oh, yeah. you remember the weeks after that people were saying don't eat at salad bars because if you eat at the salad bar it might be tainted by the terrorists did you have you ever and it was seen- cr- people have forgotten all of that but that's the level of fear and hysteria that we are at and we're getting close to that now as well <clears throat> well that the weird thing is this have you seen the thing about the uh the uh the raj niche they did a pretty good documentary on netflix about it about the about the bhagwan shish raj niche I have no idea what Dude, that is. Oh, wait, let me hook you up with this. Bro. Let me get the uh, Netflix doc about Raj Nish. Yeah, there's also a good few other videos right now on my wait, channel. What's it on called? Um, wait, I got to find it, dude. No, I got it. Uh, about bog about bogwan about dude watch a documentary called wild country so back in the back in the day i remember this as a kid back in the day this bogwan bought up uh, like all this property in an eastern oregon county right this is what we talk about it. And they, and they build up this thing and they realized that they could take over their local County government hmm. and they took over their local County government to institute their own like thing. And they're a bunch of like free love weirdo Bogwan dudes. And they gave them money. They all dressed in red and they were armed to the teeth, dude. They were super armed and militarized and the whole thing. And they had taken over this County in in eastern oregon and then the the late the leader chick who was working for the bogwan got all paranoid and they uh they tried to like do they tried that to to uh get this vote passed and they poisoned these salad bars with um 
botulism or something to try to shut down the vote and they all got busted. It was like a whole, like, dude, call, watch wild country. It'll blow you away. Cause that's happened in America. We're, and again, you watch that and, and it goes to everything you're saying. And I'm saying people don't understand how much power they have. If they have a concerted effort and point their energy to these 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 systems that by default are open to participation but if no one participates mm -hmm. you can you can take them over it's, it, it was an antelope oregon it dude it's worth it to watch it's just it fascinating yeah, it sounds like it no you're, you're gonna be fired up when you see you'll be like holy smoke that went on dude. that's <laughs> real wild yeah, country. It. yeah wild country dude those are my tips for you brother awesome i'll check that one out definitely all right. Well, have a good night. Good luck on spring break and your research. Thanks a lot, Hamish. Good luck with everything you're up to as well. All right. Good I night. check in with uh, some of your other streams here and there too. Okay. So. And and check out Stuart's show tomorrow. Like the more the more coherent version of this. 